plaintiff, Nicole Collins, says the defendant has been one of her best friends since elementary school. But once Nicole became her landlord, everything changed. Nicole's suing because she rented a three-bedroom house to the defendant and she failed to pay rent. Defendant Tiffany Carpenter says Nicole has always been aggressive. And once she beat down a door with a crowbar while fighting with her boyfriend. Start with you. Okay, so me and Tiffany, we've been, she's been one of my best friends since elementary school. We've been there th to support each other through everything, the birth of our kids, um, crazy relationships. If I've ever needed somebody to come with me to pull up on a boyfriend, she's been all for it, ready to set it off. Um, and vice versa. She's giving me the impression she's a little bit lazy and somewhat welfare queenish when I became her landlord. Um, How so? What's the welfare part? Just trying to figure out when we've had trouble, I've had trouble collecting the rent. What's going on? She's great at doing hair. She was pursuing a nursing career. I always try to motivate her and support her in that. That but doesn't sound like a welfare that, type. But she doesn't not sound lazy either. You've been hanging around the wrong crowd for you to think folks are like that. No, she's not a nurse you yet either. You sound like Ronald Reagan, welfare queens. Mm -hmm. When these women couldn't get jobs, they called them welfare queens uh, because the society failed to educate them and prepare them for the job market. I'm coming here with that. You sound mm -hmm. like one of them old bougie types. <laughs> no, got she's you a my little friend. education, doing well, got your house you're renting to, and all of a sudden she's welfare. She's <laughs> lazy. <laughs> she does work two jobs and go to school and does that, but she's welfare type. <laughs> What's welfare about her? Just not reaching her full potential. That's welfare. I always push her. That's welfare. No, it's not. I don't not think welfare. I have either. No, it's Anybody not in here think they have reached their full potential? <laughs> no. We all are welfare types. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> What's welfare about her? Just not reaching her full potential. That's welfare. I always push her. That's welfare. No, it's welfare. I don't think welfare. I have either. No, it's Anybody not Anybody in here think they have reached their full potential? <laughs> no. We all are welfare types. Plaintiff Nicole Collins is suing her former friend who claims Nicole is so aggressive that she once beat down a door with a crowbar. Let me hear from you, welfare. <laughs> welfare well, queen. Well, Your Honor, um, <laughs> we've been friends for uh, numbers of years. Um, I've always been there for her. Um, there has been times where she has been a little bit aggressive. Like she said, we've been together when, you know, boyfriend drama and all this stuff. She beat in the door with the crowbar. Um, I didn't beat it in. Well, you know, open the door with the crowbar. Um, While you were inside with there. a guy? No, not me. <laughs> we were going to go, you know, see what's going on, check the scenery out. Um, and we did. And we, you Crowbarred know. Crowbarred the door open. Yeah. What did you do when you get in, when you um, got in? Just got in there and, you know, was checking did the scene out. Jump on somebody? No, but... Um, they just talked, you know, they talked to some I stuff I found out what I needed to find yeah, out. pretty much. With a crowbar in your hand, I guess they no. would talk. No, the no, crowbar was they heard it going in the over. door, the door was open. That was like open sesame. What else you want to tell me about Miss um, Christine, perfect, excellent human being who's never been on welfare? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, she could be a I've little been controlling on welfare, by the way. at times. I was on welfare with my mother for a while. And then when I went to college, believe it or not, my first year I received food stamps. My mother had died three months after I was in college, had no money, so I qualified for food stamps. And I went and got them. So me and you about the same. We've been on welfare. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. You've been on welfare? I've been on welfare. <laughs> oh, man, you are, I was about to call you a lie, but go ahead. Um, uh, you know, I ain't going to let up on you after that. You know, when folks come in here putting my folks down or trying to act boozy, I don't let you go. I would never put her down. All right, lift her up. Go um, ahead. But, yeah, um, you know, we, we, we have uh, mutual friends together. Um, you know, sometimes she could be a little controlling with friends, um, but that's, you know... Yeah. All right. Well, she ain't controlling enough to get you to get a job. 
<laughs> well, so she says, you tell me about that. I've been over here sticking up well, for you. The, well, yeah, um, I was actually um, out of work. Um, I had two kids back to back. Um, and um, I was kind of in a depressed stage, my own self. Um, I think you would say it was a uh, postpartum depression. How long did you go without work? Um, not very long, probably like about eight months. And what about your advanced training? Um, I am currently seeking to go back to school, but um, I work full time now. Um, and you have children, I, I so have, it's hard to go children. at night. Yeah, mm-hmm. so um, more so I'm trying to get more money. I was trying to get more money. I'm a single parent, get more money to pay the to pay the rent, right. to pay the bills. Okay, and that's what we that. hear about and she's going to talk about that what happened here. So, we signed a rental agreement in June 2018 where she would pay $1200 a month to rent my three bedroom home um, until she got a, her housing choice voucher. In October of 2018, she started paying $500 a month. October of 18? Of 2018, yes. Um, But the housing choice voucher didn't become effective until March of 2019. Who was making up the difference from June until eight? So I was left under the impression that she was going to, we started the housing choice voucher So she never paid 1,200 at any point? She did from June to October. That's what I'm asking. October. June to October, she was able to pay the 1,200. Yes. And then she reduced it based on her pending approval of section eight voucher? She reduced it to 500. So she was giving me five and that left a $700 difference. Okay. Yes. And she hasn't paid that at all? No. All right. And that's how many months again? That was five months. Okay. When you've asked, what has she told you? So there, in March, um, when the housing choice voucher became effective, we had a discussion about that. And I said, you know, I need the money. I'm a single mother as well. I can't pay for your family to live in my house and pay for me and my kids and as well. this was after she was approved? This was after, well, she, after was she began receiving. Yes. Which one? We signed the Section 8 lease March 11, 2019. Mm-hmm. So we had a conversation then. When did her money start coming in? When did you begin getting the check? I got the, the first payment um, March 20th. Okay. So you did get yes. the start. Yes. So we had a con- but when we signed the lease on mm-hmm. March 11, that's when we knew that they weren't going to pay in the rears. So we had a conversation about that. Um, and I said, you know, if you don't have it to give all, all up front, let's just increase the rent a little bit. Um, but then that never happened. She agreed, but it never happened. So that's why we're here. My mother had died three months after I was in college, had no money, so I qualified for food stamps. And I went and got them. So me and you about the same. We've been on welfare. Mm-hmm. All right. You've been on welfare? I've been on welfare. Oh, man, you are I'm about to call you a lie. Plaintiff Nicole Collins is suing her former friend, who claims Nicole is so aggressive that she once beat down a door with a crowbar. Was that a condition of her moving in, that she be approved for Section 8, and that she apply and be approved? So she already got um, a letter saying... When she moved that in. That you're on the waiting list. When she moved in. When she moved in. The, and you knew that. That she was on the waiting list. Yes. Yes. Okay. The initial, when we first made this um, <clears throat> agreement, she wasn't going to move in until it was actually effective. Mm-hmm. But she wanted to move from where she was sooner. So you agreed to let her. So let that's when you. we agreed that she would pay the $1,200 a month mm-hmm. until she actually got approved to be mm-hmm. on set, till we, till it was effective. Mm-hmm. What do you say? Okay. So, um, yes, I did move in in June, June 1st. Um, did and you so assume I got... you were going to be approved? Sooner? Because, yeah, did they kept... Did you assume? Him. Mm-hmm. Yes. You assumed she was going to be approved? Yes. Her Section 8 yes. application? Okay. Yes, but we just didn't know when. Got it. Yeah. So, right. um, I actually received it back in November of 2018. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so we had to get things squared away in the house. And that's the reason why it took so long for those months. Um, Well, once I had got, once I received the voucher, that's when we made an agreement to me paying 500 a month. Mm -hmm. And so then it took longer for them to approve the house because um, the house wasn't up to code, to their codes. And so um, that's when 
okay. we, we came to the agreement and then things just started falling down to where I couldn't afford it. And then I started working, but then I had um, my car situation had it just went what all out month of control. Did you um, uh, did you face the inability to pay after I received my voucher? I couldn't afford to pay the, the back pay, right. and we didn't know that they weren't going to cover it because okay. when I went into about the, the pay going forward, yeah, so would you have was... would you have been able to pay five hundred dollars a month? Yes, I did pay the five hundred dollars a month, but I couldn't pay an extra the extra that she was asking for the for. back pay. Yes, right, and then I have a copy, and that's of... what you're suing for is the back pay. Yes. yes, and then I have a copy of what I was supposed to sign. Um, for the inspection readiness. Mm -hmm. And never on here, nowhere on here did it say anything about, so she left me under the impression mm -hmm. that they would pay pending the inspection. But never on here did it say it doesn't start the date of the inspection um, and that it doesn't start until when the inspection passed. So when I spoke with them to find out, well, how does it work with the payment and everything? That's when they told me she is, that's her responsibility. She's aware that she, mm. we don't start paying until everything is inspected, passed and approved. But that wasn't your agreement with her? That was our agreement. Yes. That she would pay $1,200 a month until her housing choice voucher. But you allowed her to reduce it to 500 instead of the 1200. No, I didn't allow her to. When you, I have the um, copy of the Section 8 lease agreement that states that's her portion. So that's why mm -hmm. she just reduced it to her portion because she left me under the impression that they were going to start paying their portion in October. So you were under the impression you all had not discussed it and agreed. No. What we're doing here is going with the agreement you all made. Right. Not with what HUD made with you yeah. or what HUD made with her. We're going with the agreement you all made with each other. Right. Because had she not known, had you all not admitted today that it was a condition that she be approved for Section 8 in order to live there, then no, the amount wouldn't have been reduced because that wasn't your agreement. Your agreement was I'm charging $1,200. You give me $1,200. I don't care how you get it or where you get it from. As you all told me that, then it would have been different. But what you've told me is her paying you was conditioned upon her getting approved for Section 8. No, because this lease here was the initial one we signed. With her, let's see it. This was in effect... This was in effect until... And the least the written agreement is binding, but my point is, this yeah. is that's what you told me uh, when I first asked, and that's why that question was so relevant. You agree to pay $1,200 per month, and there's no contingency on here. Ma'am, did you know that you had to pay the $1,200 even if they turned you down? Um, pretty much. He, you I did guess, know? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, then you're old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> $3,500 is your judgment. As she acknowledges, she signed a lease that does not have anything that says anything about Section 8. It says, I will owe you $1,200 every month. And had it said, if and when I get my Section 8 funds, it didn't say that. It says $1,200 any way you get it to me. Wow. So... Judgment for the plaintiff, 3500 Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. I hope we can get our friendship back on track. Yes. I'm glad we're putting this past us because we have a lot of years invested in this. Yes, I feel the so, same way. Moving forward, I'm going to support you on going back to school and all of that. She's okay. going to be great.